Hello, welcome to New Harvest Christian Fellowship, Manchester, England, and thank you for subscribing to our sermon podcast. The message you're about to hear was recorded live at one of our recent services. We pray it will be a blessing to your life, and if you'd like to get in touch with us, we'll give you our contact information at the end of the recording. Thank you once again. Enjoy the preaching. Today, uh, we want to uh, get in back into our series. You remember a couple of weeks ago, uh, we started uh, with this series about seeking God. You can remember that, yeah? We started that and we talked a, an overview of what it meant to seek God and to go after God. And today, I, I, I want to remind you that when we say seek God, it's not like he's lost we're not saying that at all. It's not that he uh, can't be found. It's, it's kind of like the child's game. This isn't a perfect illustration, but it's kind of like that. that. That game you play seek or hide and seek. You know, when you, you'd have someone go hide and then you'd go seek, they weren't really lost and you knew they were somewhere in the location. You just had to kind of like use your wits to go find them and, you know, search in different places till you finally found them. And uh, it was rare that someone didn't get found in the game. Every now and then someone, maybe you were the champ at hiding and no one <laughs> ever found you. But the majority of the time it's found and, you know, everybody would laugh and it'd be a good time. That's kind of how it is with God. It's not like he's hiding from us but it's like we have to go after him we have to move from where we are spiritually emotionally mentally to where he is because he's on a different level I think you'd agree with me on that and so seeking him is so important last time we learned what is required of me when I seek God. What is required of you when I seek God? We talked about effort and determination, that it just doesn't, he just doesn't show up. I, 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 he does miraculously sometimes without any intervention from us, but the majority of the time it's when we go after him, he moves to us. Dr James says, draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. So it takes effort and determination. We also need to understand the time frame. You know, it's not just when we feel like it. It's when God is pushing this upon our heart. When he, uh, the Bible says, draw close to him and seek him while he can be found. And then we talked about the proximity factor. We need to move, choose to move closer, as we've already said. And that as he moves closer to us, we have to move closer to him. That's what's required in seeking. Our text this morning is just one simple common verse. It's Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 13. Paul the apostle writes to the Philippian church not to brag or to boast but to encourage them and to kind of teach them that they can have and should have the same thing as him. He says, I can do all things. Don't you like that? I can do all things. I can, I can go through this trial I can see God meeting the needs in my family. I can endure sickness. I can endure hardship. I can endure pain. Whatever the case may be, I can do all things. But there's this important phrase that's right at the end of it. It says, through Christ who strengthens me. Through Christ who strengthens me. So number one on our agenda this morning is to let you know that you and I and we must seek his strength. Seek his strength. See, I'm going to make a statement here that I want you uh, to remember. And that's this. That no person has enough strength on his or her own to handle every situation as God intended. If you're trying to do this on your own and you're going in your own strength and your own willpower and your own determination, you're going to fail the majority of the time. And you will never get to the place that God wants you to be until you say, Lord, I am without strength. I need your strength and I'm willing to move from where I'm at to where you're at in order to obtain it. See, it's critical that we recognize this because this statement that you see up on the board, uh, when I saw that picture, I said, man, that looked like me when I was about 12 years old right there. Uh, but this means that every person who hears this message today, 
every person who hears this message in the future recognize this, that you need an external source of strength, something that you do not possess on your own. You cannot uh, build it up. You cannot begin to search inward for that strength. Recognize that a Christian's battle goes far beyond just manning up or having a stiff upper lip. It requires far more than that, doesn't it? And you and I have to realize that we need his strength and his strength cannot be obtained apart from seeking him. Do you get that? I remember when uh, we were having dinner a long time ago and our oldest daughter was not very uh, big at that time. She was very young and we were serving uh, corn on the cob, you know, sweet corn, regular natural sweet corn, uh, corn on the cob. And uh, we were passing it around and we asked her, would you like some corn on the cob? And she says, I'll take the corn, but not the cob. (laughs) You know, uh, and we all had a good laugh because she was sincere, you know. She wanted the corn, but not the cob. See, and that's how sometimes we are with God. I want your strength, but I don't want you. I, I, I need what you can give me, but I'm not sure I really want all the things that comes with being a believer. See, and the reality is we need him more than we need his strength, but we can't get his strength without seeking him. So all Christians need to seek his strength. Psalms chapter 105 and verse number four says, seek the Lord and his strength. So there's your command. There's your command. And then it gives us the second part, seek his presence continually. So that gives us a little clue of how we get his strength. We get into his presence. When we're in his presence, we're stronger. When we're in his presence, we can do more things. We have to seek his strength so we can be as strong as God wants us to be. Can you say amen? Can I have my helpers come down, please? I have a couple of helpers that are going to assist me today. And they're going to come down and give me a hand. Praise God. You can come right up onto the platform there. Face the audience. You know this is Brother Herb. This is Sister Gracie. So this is illustration of what we feel like. This is what we feel like. See, you, you know how young people say goals? Brothers, this is goals right here. Sister Burley, I get it, man. I know why you chose him. I I see it all over him. If I was you, I'd choose him too. That's as far as we're going with that one here today. And this is how we... No, keep them up, brother. Come on now. Come on now. So this is what we want to be like. This is what sometimes we think we're like. But this is more a reality of what things are like. And if we're honest with ourselves... We might be beautiful, but we're thin and not that strong. So which one are you today? When when in reality are you? To go from this to this is going to require something of you. So go ahead and pick up those weights right there. So can you lift those? Can you... I want to see you move those. I asked him to bring some bar, but I think he added a few weights to look better on there. I know him already. He looks pretty good. You can put him down in case we don't want to hurt your pride here. Uh, so uh, this is our goal. This is our desire. When we're seeking God, we want to crush that iron. We want to be strong. But sometimes it's more like this. This is kind of like what we do and we're just you know uh, uh, this is what we're doing just trying to get by and just trying to uh, move along we're trying we're trying but this is the goal can you give our helpers a big hand clap today thank you very much so we need God's strength. We need God's strength. So uh, when in particular are we going to like need it? Because that's an important thing. 
if you know when you're going to need God's strength, then you can kind of know where, how he's going to give it and what he's going to do. So let me first tell you, the first time or first season or the first issue of when we need his strength is when there's some hard work ahead. And the book of Nehemiah speaks to that, chapter 2 and verse number 17. The Bible says, Then I said to them, You see the trouble we are in? Jerusalem lies in ruins, and its gates have been burned with fire. Come, let us rebuild the wall, and know we will no longer be in disgrace. I also told them about the gracious hand of my God upon me and what the king had said to me, and they replied, Let us start rebuilding. And so they began this good work. See, uh, their situation was not good. They were in trouble. Your scripture says that. You can read it right there. It tells us that they were in a time of disgrace. Uh, their, their beloved city was lying in ruins. Things weren't what they wanted them to be. They didn't leave it. They didn't abandon it. They didn't just say, oh, well, I guess it's not going to work out. We, Nehemiah seeks God, and then he rallies the people, and they say, you know what? We need to do this job. But it was a big, big job. And the Bible says they began this good work. Some of you are facing the challenge to a good work right now in your life. Good work. Maybe God's wanting to develop new character in you, fresh integrity. He's wanting you to begin to embark on a, on a stronger life for Christ. He's trying to get you to put aside your pet projects and grab hold of his will for your life. Your work could possibly include some character training. It could possibly include, just as I've already said, new attitudes. But whatever the case may be, you're going to need strength to do that new work. The second thing that we time when we need strength is when you're in a battle and you feel your strength beginning to wane. Some of you are in the middle of a battle right now or you've just begun a battle. Some of you are going, I just got out of a battle and praise God. But if you're beginning a battle or in the middle of a battle, you can sometimes feel weak. The Bible tells us in 2 Samuel chapter 23, it gives us a couple of stories back to back that speak to our situation. It says, and after him was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, the Ahohite. (laughs) I always chuckle every time I read that, son of Dodo, you know, sounds so funny to me. One of the three mighty men with David. So this guy probably looked like her, probably had big muscles, probably was strong. And it says, and he was one of David's three mighty men, one of the the guys that was his closest companions and closest warriors. And when they defied the Philistines, so that was he was there when they went through that whole battle with Goliath and all of that. And it says, when they defied the Philistines who were gathered there for battle, and the men of Israel had retreated, he arose and attacked the Philistine until his hand was weary. His hand was weary. But then the next phrase, as you can see, says, and his hand stuck or cleaved to the sword. He needed just a little bit more strength to keep fighting. You don't need all the strength to finish the battle. What you need and I need and we need is just enough strength to do one more swing, to just go one more day. Some people say, I just can't take it. I'm done. I'm finished. That's it. I'm fed up. Think of all the phrases people use. And I just can't do anymore. That's really not true. When you seek his strength, You can have what's necessary to cleave to the sword. And then the Bible says the Lord brought about a great victory that day. Why did God bring about a great victory? Because Eleazar was able to hang on to that sword for just a little bit longer. He was able to keep fighting just a little bit more. He was weary, but he did not quit. He sought the strength of the Lord, and the people returned after him only to plunder. Verse 11 gives us another story. And after him was Shammah, the son of Aji, the Hararite, 
the Philistines had gathered together into a troop where there was a piece of ground full of lentils, a little bean patch that was there. And the Bible says the Philistines had gathered together this troop there and the people fled from the Philistines, but he, he, Shama, was different. He said, I'm not running. He said, I'm staying. He's saying, I'm fixing myself in this obscure little agricultural plot of land because to God, it matters. And I want to tell you today, your family, how insignificant it is, matters to God. Your personal ministry, your personal life matters to God. It's worth fighting for. Our church, our fellowship, Shift Ministries, has, is worth fighting for. It's worth God establishing and reestablishing. It's worth standing, like Shama says, in the bean patch, willing to fight. And the Bible says he stationed himself in the middle of the field and defended it. When he was weak, he sought God. He defended it for something that the rest of the people fled, didn't think it was important. Give it to the devil. Who cares? And then he says, so the Lord brought about a great victory. One last one before we move on. When do we need God's strength? When you need self-control. All of us face this, don't we? We all go through temptation. Some of you were tempted right now. You saw Herb and you were like, oh yeah, he's one of mine. You know, I, well, you know, I'm, I can't. If you guys were from LA, I would do some things on you right now. But I, <laughs> my point being, <laughs> we're all tempted. Gracie's going to chastise me when I get home right now, I can tell you. Rightfully so, I have to say. James chapter 1 and verse 14 says, but each one is tempted. Does it say just certain people are tempted? It says each one. It's telling us each one as individuals. We're tempted. And how are we tempted? It says when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. So honestly, it's not someone else that tempts you. We, we, we can say that. We can say it was this that tempted me, that. Tempted. It's not really. It starts in here. This is where our, and whatever you're prone to, whatever sin, whatever flavor of sin that you like and is particular to you, that's what will draw you away. It says, then when this desire is conceived, and here's why we got to fight, because it says, when this desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. So we need to be able to have the strength to fight against ourselves. I learned early on in my Christian walk, the devil was no match for me. I could defeat the devil every time. Who I couldn't defeat and who was way stronger than me was me. My selfish man, my carnal man, that person inside that the Bible labels the old man. Telling that guy no is difficult. Telling that guy, get thee behind me, is hard. Casting out myself out of myself is a real pain. I need strength from God to be able to battle against myself. When you need self-control, you need to seek his strength. Are you with me? So, we know that we all face these situations that we just described and we all have to recognize the fact that when we need him when we need his strength when we should seek his strength is first of all like I've already said when there's hard work ahead secondly you know when we feel our strength waning from battle and when you need self-control and as we learned last week or a couple weeks ago it's really being spirit controlled to control our self. So when we face these situations, we want to be able to, we understand, I should say, Paul's prayer. In the book of Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 14, he says, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, 
that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being. That's the prayer right there. That's what we should be praying for our family, praying for our spouses, praying for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Pray for ourselves that strengthening with power through His Spirit. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Through the Spirit of Jesus, I can do it. We should be praying that way. So as we kind of move along here, I want to... uh, kind of answer this question. How does he provide it? What is it? How does it come into our life, into our existence? I have to say that there's lots of ways. I've got two, but the first one is the main one I want to look at today. Strength can come upon us supernaturally. Supernaturally beyond what you could ever think or ask. We see this story of Samson. You remember Samson in the Old Testament? The Bible says in the book of Judges, chapter 14 and verse 5, it says, Then Samson went down with his father and mother to Timnah, and they came to the vineyards of Timnah, and behold, a young lion came toward him roaring. Now we read the Bible, and sometimes we don't put our minds into this picture here. I want you to think you're there with your mom and your dad, you know, you're, you, you've got your parents with you and you're going through and all of a sudden a lion comes up roaring. Now, that would put fear in most of our hearts. I don't know, unless you, someone that has a nice spear and you know how, or some firearm or something, I mean, that would be fearful. They had nothing. The Bible says, and we're going to read this, nothing in his hand. So they had nothing. But then the Bible says, Then the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon him, rushed upon him. He sees the lion, the lion roars, and then all of a sudden God's Spirit comes upon Samson, and it says although he had nothing in his hand, this was a supernatural act. It wasn't that he had muscles like Herve. It wasn't like he was able to do this on his own, but God came upon him and he tore the lion into pieces as one tears a young goat. That's a supernatural strength. You can find supernatural strength when you have a hard work ahead. You can find supernatural strength when you're faced with a battle that's beyond your ability. Supernatural strength, and I know it seems like not, but it's true, when you need self-control to be spirit-controlled. God will help you. I'd like to invite uh, Gracie back down, please. Can you come down, Gracie? Because most of us, we can more relate to Gracie's person than we can to Herb's person, can't we? So this is how we are. And sometimes we're facing a really hard battle, and we have a big weight to lift. So Gracie's going to hoist this big weight above her head. I don't think she's going to hoist it above her head. But then all of a sudden, someone's going to come rushing down. Try it again. See if you can do it again. Now she can do it. Can you lift it above your head? Sure she can. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Because the strength wasn't in her own power. The strength was with assistant, with someone who is stronger than the her. And that's what you and I need, is we need the one who is stronger than I to begin to infiltrate our hearts and our minds and our, and our attitudes. We need this ability to be strong, and supernatural strength can come upon us. I think it's perfectly legal in God's eyes and God's laws to say, Lord, I need your spirit to rush me. I need your spirit to come upon me mightily. I think it's perfectly legit to pray that way. Matter of fact, I think it's better to pray like that than just to quote some religious prayer. 
I think it's better to say, Lord, I need power today. I need power beyond what you could, I can think or ask. But you have all the power. Just as you own all the gold and silver and the cattle on a thousand hills, uh, you've got all the strength of every strong man that ever lived. Uh, and I need that strength to come upon me. I want to be like Samson and tear lions apart to begin to st- tread uh, on scorpions and serpents uh, that no weapon formed against me is going to have victory, that I can do all these things uh, through Christ. Now, there's one last one, and I've, I've got to bring you to reality, because the majority of the time, that's not really how it works. The majority of the time, we're faced with, I shouldn't say how it works. I don't want to say that. I just want to say, uh, most of the time, we're not faced with battles that we require that level and degree of strength. And so God gives us strength in other ways. And like I said, there's many ways, but one of the ones I want to tell you today is, is through trials, is through trials. See, we all face trials every day. You're going to face some trials probably right after the service, maybe even with someone right here in the church. Some of you all fight so much, it's unbelievable, man. <laughs> I don't know how you survive this long with you tearing each other. It's like girls that tear each other's hair out, you know. But then there's some that, you know, as soon as you're walking out, something's going to happen. On the way home, some, we, I guarantee you by tomorrow night, you'll have gone through some sort of trial, almost for sure. But most of our trials are mere annoyances, aren't they? They're, they're not very uh, huge and strong and, and, and outrageously hard trials. They're like annoyances, and they remind me of this weight. They're kind of like this. They're just, just a weight. And, and, and you think like, man, you're just lifting this weight. You know, and if you're just lifting this weight a few times, you're not getting any stronger. But if you lifted this weight all day long, over and over, begin to hoist it above your head, begin to hold it out to your side, begin to throw it around your back and lift it up and begin to do things with it and always were hoisting these mere annoyances. Before you know it, you'd look like Herb. Before you know it, you'd have the strength that's necessary instead of you being someone that the Lord needed to help, God would be using you to help somebody else because you've allowed these trials, these hardships to build you rather than break you. This is so vital for us today. Our world is facing hardship. I won't say not like we've never seen in the history of the world, but definitely in all of our lifetime. More more trials than that. In the history of our church, we're facing things we never saw before. It, it, It can be a little intimidating, a little scary. But when we read the Bible, we know we can do it because we're going to seek His strength. We can endure. And so today... I want to encourage you with your trials that instead of seeking pain relief, I want you to focus on the fact that this is God's way of making you strong. This is God's way of making you powerful in his kingdom to assist someone else. Today, seek his strength. Seek, seek, seek. You can't have the corn without the cob. You can't have his strength without having him. But if we seek him, the Bible gives us promises that he will be there to supernaturally come upon us and give us the strength that we need. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, thank you. If you've been blessed or challenged by today's preaching and you'd like to get in touch with us, The easiest way is via our website at www.newharvestuk.com. You can email us at info at newharvestuk.com or look us up on Facebook or Twitter. You can call us on 0161 278 6305 or you can even write to us at 194 Chapel Street, Salford, Manchester, M36BY. We'd also like to extend a warm welcome for you to join us at any of our services. However you might be feeling, and whatever you might have been told, know this. God loves you, and there's a place for you in his kingdom. God bless you, we're praying for you, and once again, thank you for listening.